Look, I'm afraid Megan is showing herself what she is. She's self-obsessed, self-indulgent, and this is nothing but a vanity project. And then... Hello, squaddies. Welcome to Sussex Squadron. Tommy here, with another episode of countering negativity and media bias against our favourite couple, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Today, we're addressing some unfounded claims made by Nana Aqua GB news host, Lizzie Cundy broadcaster and columnist, and Matthew Laza, former Labour Party advisor. It's vital to debunk these misconceptions to ensure the Sussexes are seen in the light they deserve. So grab a seat and let's journey together to uncover the truth behind these allegations. First off, we take a look at the claims made by Nana Aqua. Now, Aqua suggests that the Sussexes are using the royal family to sell their image and make money. Well, you see, I don't care if she tries to make a living for herself. I think that's the right thing to do. But I, I kind of find, I find it extremely irritating that they continue to use the royal yeah. brand to sell these products. I mean, this is, this is... Yeah, I mean, there is something deliciously British about this sort of war of the jams. This is a kind of whiff of the WI um, or the village show uh, in some ways. But, it, but more seriously, you say absolutely she doesn't read the room. How tone deaf is this? Because this jam is incredibly expensive mm. when she's always talking about poverty. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have indeed stepped back from their royal duties, but not to exploit the royal lineage for personal gain. Instead, they've chosen a life of service and entrepreneurship independent of the royal family. For instance, their non-profit organisation, Archerwell Foundation, is a testament to their commitment to uplift communities and champion compassion in the world. The organization has launched multiple initiatives addressing critical issues such as mental health, gender equality, and online misinformation. The Sussexes have also ventured into the world of content creation with Archiwell Audio and Archiwell Productions. Rather than capitalizing on their royal status, these platforms aim to produce programming that uplifts and inspires, spotlighting stories and voices that are often ignored. Their podcast, for instance, has featured diverse guests from various walks of life, promoting conversations that foster understanding and empathy. In terms of their financial independence, the Sussexes have inked deals with companies like Lemonada Media, Spotify and Netflix. These contracts were not handed to them on a silver platter because of their royal status. They were earned on the merit of their creative potential and commitment to producing meaningful content. Nana Aqua's claim also conveniently overlooks the fact that the Sussexes have expressed their intention to be financially independent from the royal family. They've made it clear that they are not interested in living off taxpayers' money and their actions have consistently mirrored this commitment. As you can see, the Sussexes are far from exploiting the royal family for financial gain. They're carving out a path of their own, guided by their values of service, compassion, and respect for diversity. Their actions demonstrate a desire to use their influence not for personal enrichment, but to make a positive impact in the world. Next on the list is Matthew Laza. Now, Matthew has taken the liberty to suggest that the Sussexes don't have a sustainable career and that the American Riviera Orchard is a joke. But let's take a closer look at these claims. She is, I, well, I feel sorry for them because they're not, this is not a sustainable career for them. She was an actress. She used to get, you know, if that's her, you know, and it's, not, it's a great thing to be an actress. Back in there. But, you know, she should, she should at least, try, there's something she could, she could do which would give them, you know, they've got 40, 50 years of public, of public life ahead of them. Just flog it over Price Jam. She's so <laughs> desperate. Gonna, she it. is so desperate to be the next Gwyneth Paltrow. Firstly, the notion that the Sussexes don't have a sustainable career is, quite frankly, absurd. Since stepping back from royal duties, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have been involved in numerous projects, many of which are not only financially successful, but also have a positive societal impact. They've signed multi-year deals with Lemonada Media, Netflix and Spotify, venturing into the realm of digital content production and podcasting. Their Archiwell Productions and Archiwell Audio are pioneering platforms for uplifting narratives and voices that might otherwise go unheard. 
Furthermore, Megan has also made her return to the literary world with her children's book, The Bench, which explores the bond between father and son as seen through a mother's eyes. If all these aren't indicative of a sustainable career, I'm not sure what is. As for the American Riviera Orchard, it's far from being a joke. They've turned their Montecito property into a sustainable organic farm that's committed to nurturing the local ecosystem while providing fresh produce. This whimsical hobby, it's a testament to their commitment to environmental sustainability and local community support. And let's not forget their philanthropic efforts through the Archerwell Foundation. They're continuously working on projects that address critical issues of our time, from mental health to racial and gender equality. So it's not just about having a career, it's about making a difference. So Matthew Laza, I urge you to reconsider your stance. The Sussexes are more than just former royals. They're entrepreneurs, philanthropists, and advocates carving out a path that's uniquely their own. They're not only sustaining their careers, but also positively impacting the world with their initiatives. Clearly, the Sussexes are making a positive and sustainable impact with their work. Finally, we'll address the comments made by Lizzie Cundy. Cundy asserts that everything Meghan does is not working. But is this really the case? Look, I'm afraid Meghan is showing herself what she is. She's self-obsessed, self-indulgent, and this is nothing but a vanity project to make herself look important mm. or try to, you know, kind of relaunch herself. But frankly, she's got jam all over her face, and I think actually she's toast in every <laughs> sense because everything she does seems to flop. First, let's turn our attention to Meghan's passion project, the Together Cookbook. This initiative was not only a bestseller, but it also raised substantial funds for the Hub Community Kitchen, a local charity. Moreover, it was a triumph in promoting cultural diversity and unity. How can this be labelled as not working? Next, let's not forget the launch of Archerwell Audio. This production company, established by the Sussexes, has already secured a multi-year deal with Spotify. These are podcasts which aim to build community through shared experience, storytelling and values have been well received by audiences globally. This certainly doesn't sound like a failure. Additionally, Meghan's guest editing stint at British Vogue was a resounding success. The September 2019 issue titled Forces for Change was the fastest selling in the history of the magazine and the best selling of the decade. In fact, it won the Diversity Initiative of the Year Award at the PPA Awards. Lastly, but certainly not least, let's consider the work Meghan and Prince Harry are doing through their non-profit organization, Archerwell Foundation. They've partnered with numerous organizations to drive systemic cultural change across all communities, focusing on critical issues like racial and gender equity, mental health, and digital well-being. This work, though not always visible in the public eye, is undoubtedly making a significant impact. So when Lizzie Cundy claims that everything Meghan does is not working, it's important to remember the facts. These facts paint a different picture, one of success, impact, and positive change. It's evident that Meghan's efforts are far from futile. Nana Aqua's claim that the Sussexes are using the royal family to sell their image and make money is not only unjust, but completely overlooks their ongoing philanthropic efforts. Their commitment to public service clearly contradicts this claim. Matthew Laza's assertion that the Sussexes don't have a sustainable career and that their American Riviera orchard is a joke similarly lacks substance. The Sussexes have not been found, only carved out a clear path for themselves, but are also contributing positively to their community through their organization. These claims made by these individuals not only misrepresent the Sussexes, but also contribute to a toxic narrative. The reality is quite contrary. The Sussexes are dedicated public servants, hard-working individuals, and a couple who have shown resilience in the face of adversity. Support for the Sussexes remains strong, despite the baseless attacks they continue to face. That's all for today, squaddies. We appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you found value in our content, 
please do like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for joining us on Sussex Squadron. See you in the next video.